Seasonic, the heart of your system. I'm Neil Ward for Kit Guru. Ah, Thermal Take. A company with many cases in their product range. If I was to review these cases in the usual way, I think I'd still be working on them around about CES 2020. So I'm gonna do a roundup of these four cases using some other Thermaltech hardware that I've also got here. I've got two uh, subtly different cooling kits. Uh, so the four cases I'm gonna be taking a look at are the Commander C35. Uh, there's uh, six, I think, different commanders ranging from 31 to 36. Uh, that's 100 pounds. The Level 20 MT ARGB, 85 quid. And over on this side, the two big boys, Level 20 GT ARGB, that's 230 pounds. And then the enormous Level 20 XT is 200 pounds. During this roundup, I'm gonna address how much cooling you can install in the cases and what sort of RGB they come with, how many fans you get, because these cases seem to me at first glance to be almost delivery systems for thermal take accessories. It is also amusing to note that I've got two cases over here that are 200 pounds and 230 pounds respectively. This Pacific C240 DDC cooling kit is 305 pounds, so the single most expensive thing on the table at the moment, the cooling kit. Anyway, on with the cases. The cheapest case in this roundup is the Level 20 MT ARGB. Level 20 means you get that aesthetic, so you have the curves and the grey painted finish. ARGB, that's the three 120mm fans at the front. The 120mm fan at the rear, that's a regular black fan. ARGB is indeed addressable, however you get a couple of cables you can connect to the hub, either for ARGB or for regular 12 volt RGB. The fans have proprietary connections, that's gonna be a theme of this roundup. Uh, so support only for 120mm fans with this case, no 140s. The layout's slightly unusual, you notice it's quite a wide case. You can put a 120 uh, radiator at the rear, a 360 at the front, or a 240 at the side, should you choose. Uh, kind of a little bit Leanne Leo 11 in a sense. Other than that, the uh, core chassis is uh, regular steel. You've got a number of drive bays. So really it boils down to the aesthetic. It's the tempered glass, it's those three ARGB fans. It looks the part and it's not that expensive. Let's see how the hardware actually fits inside the case. Installing this 240mm radiator on the side mount is straightforward enough. However, their DDC pump with their own bracket is not then going to go on the radiator and there's no obvious place to put it. If you use an aftermarket bracket from the likes of AlphaCool, you can mount the pump on that without too much difficulty, but this setup doesn't make a massive amount of sense to me. If you want to install a 360 rad at the front, or indeed any rad at the front, it's going to have to go in instead of the side radiator rather than as well as the radiator, as it won't fit in that space. The three ARGB fans are secured with screws that go into female threads in the case there. So if you want to put an aftermarket radiator in place, the screws have to go through the fan and into the rad on the other side, which means we're going to have to shift everything by the look of it up, probably to these slots here. That didn't work out quite the way I expected. If I move the rad all the way up to the top, the front IO cables there, uh, are in the way. The rad has to sit slightly lower below those slots in these holes here. The uh, bosses that the fans attach to mean that there's space uh, for screws to attach the radiator. So long story sideways, the rad is mounted just above those fan screws. And then if I take that screw there, I can now reattach fan like this and so I want to put the fans back in the original location which means the fans are offset very slightly from the radiator to the tune of oh about yay much like so
the time has come to build the first test PC, I'm going to use the same hardware inside each of the four cases so we can do a comparison of thermals. Power supply, Seasonic Focus Plus Gold 1000 Watt. Graphics card is this Asus Vega 64 Strix. Nice big graphics card, should get quite uh, toasty and it takes up a lot of space inside the case so we can see how much space we have to work with. Motherboard, I chose this ASRock X299 uh, gaming i9 with a uh, big heatsink on the VRMs, at 18 core Core i9 processor, whole load of G-Skill Trident Z memory, it's ATX form factor, that's significant because two of the cases are ATX, two are EATX, therefore I need to go for ATX. That looked to me like a good choice of motherboard. And then the problem comes that the, <laughs> the RGB connectors are wrong. With this board, I've got 12 volt RGB, but I do not have addressable ARGB. Uh, the cases, three of them have ARGB inside, and that is you know, it's a key part of these cases. So Gigabyte sent me this X570 Aorus Pro, uh, which does have addressable. So I'm gonna bring the camera in close and show you the connectors because let's face it, if I've picked the wrong motherboard initially to use for this uh, roundup, then it's entirely possible that you might be looking at one of these cases and you too might be picking the wrong motherboard. Or alternately, this gives you a chance to pat yourself on the back because you know, the Muppet here, was going for a 12 volt RGB rather than addressable and you know all about it. My problem is that the ASRock has just the one type of RGB connector, it does not have addressable, it has the old school RGB. More accurately it's 12 volt and then GRB. Four pins and they're all populated. Gigabyte's X570 Aorus Pro has two types of RGB connectors. So we have the old school 12 volt RGB there. Next to it, we have addressable. You'll note two pins, a gap, and then the third pin. In other words, you cannot put that connector on the wrong way around. I've installed Thermaltake's 240mm DDC kit inside the MT. It went in without any difficulty, except in a theme that's gonna be recurring throughout this roundup. Pump mounts. For some reason, Thermaltake does not want you to install their pumps easily. I don't get it. A fan mount, something like that would be the obvious thing to do. But the little mounts you get with Thermaltake's own pumps, they don't go easily inside Thermaltake's cases. Very strange. I chose to remove the two drive bays from beneath the power supply shroud to give myself some more space for my power supply cables. Comes out in a number of parts, actually, uh, rather than sort of an assembly and a whole bunch of little fasteners. Uh, but once you undo everything, it comes out neatly enough, gives you plenty more space for cables, which is really useful because the space between the back panel, which has no noise deadening material, nothing like that, and the uh, rear of the motherboard tray, very little space for cables. So putting them under the pass by shroud definitely makes sense. Were I putting some mechanical drives in this case, it would be tight for space, no doubt about it. Aesthetically, it looks the part. The three fans at the front, love it. Uh, the glass, great. RGB-ness, all good. Nothing to complain about, you might think. But the three fans at the front, they're fixed speed. Uh, the RGB I can control. I've got them on just a pulsing white just for the sort of look of it. Well, more blue, really. Uh, but speed, they're controlled by the hub to which they are connected and it has no PWM function. I don't understand it. Airflow is fairly rotten. Uh, it's a combination. I, you, again, you're going to find this through this roundup. The cases seem to be more about aesthetics than airflow. However, they do leak to a certain extent. The back panel is fairly open. The floor is fairly open. But when you have a small case that's fairly much sealed on the front and the, on the main side, then uh, those fans can whir away for all their uh, heart's content. It doesn't allow you to get air to the CPU and GPU. No air coming in the front, that's a problem. Uh, I'm sure it's drawing air in through the floor, otherwise it would really choke up, but not good. The RGB on the 240 DDC kit, uh, that's perfectly pleasant, I like it. So aesthetically good, functionally, hmm, not so sure. Having said that, it's a cheap case. It's just under 85 pounds retail. You get the three front fans. Once you uh, take those off the price, you're looking 40 to 50 quid for the case itself. It's hard to be too critical. Nonetheless, more vents, please thermal take. Give us some airflow, we'd be happy. So yes, it looks good, but it's not quite as good as it looks. 
Commander C35 is the standout case in this roundup because it's not a level 20. It's got a mesh front panel, but there are actually a number of different cases from the thermal take in their commander range, which each have a different front panel. Uh, as far as I can see, they are all quite meshy. This one is pretty much entirely mesh. Behind the mesh front panel, you get a pair of 200 mil ARGB fans. That dictates the width of the case. It's a wide case. You can, if you choose, put a 280 rad in the front or the rear. You could use a 240 or 360 rad in the roof and the front should you choose to go down that route. Behind the plain steel back panel, we've got a number of drive bays. However, they are all vertically mounted. So the three and a half inch drives go like that rather than like that, or of course use SSDs if you choose. So the standout features of this case, once again, four mil tempered glass and ARGB lighting, but it's 200 mil fans, big, big fans at the front. You can install a 360mm or 280mm radiator in the front of this case, and from this angle I can see the mounts are behind those enormous 200mm fans. There's also room in the roof of the case for a second radiator. Removing these eight screws took about five minutes of pulling and levering at the fans. If you look at the uh, shiny areas, there's definitely something peculiar going on there. Our Alpha Cool 360 radiator goes inside the chassis without any trouble whatsoever and we can easily reinstall the 200 mil fans. A 240 mil radiator goes in the roof without any trouble whatsoever. Thermaltake has a slotted mounting system, but you're gonna to need to remove the screws and move the rad into a different area if you wanna move it more than a couple of millimeters to align it. Thermaltake's DDC 240 mil kit slipped inside the Commander C35 without too much difficulty, although we had a couple of recurring snags. The one is there's no pump mount. Uh, the DDC kit comes with a little bracket of sorts and I've used a couple of screws from a box of bits just to attach it to some likely looking holes. Uh, but most people are gonna have to gash up some sort of bracket and I don't understand why there isn't a bracket for the pump that fits a 120 or 140 mil uh, fan. It's just the obvious thing to do. Uh, beyond that, it looks perfectly okay. There's plenty of room for components. The rad goes in the roof nicely enough. However, you will note the uh, filter is raised because it's sitting down on the heads of screws. We've seen this before with, I forget which case manufacturer it was that did exactly the same thing. Uh, it's quite surprising to see if you're going to put a rad in the roof or, or any form of all-in-one fans or whatever and there are going to be screws projecting then quite clearly that is going to happen. Air flow through the front, clearly the front panel is made to flow air and it works well. Thermals with this setup absolutely fine, they're in the high 70s which is where we, ex mid to high, which is where we expect to see them. Uh, that's absolute temperatures, the delta is what we're going to show you on screen. Mavega 64 card is happy all is well. The RGB, I've arranged it such that the front fans are connected to one RGB header because of the, the hub arrangement and the kit uh, fans and the uh, CPU block are connected to the other RGB header on the motherboard. For reasons I simply do not begin to comprehend, Thermaltake obviously does not like control. So the fans on the rad have one connector to do with the RGB and one to do with PWM. Uh, each of the fans is connected. Uh, they uh, give you a PWM splitter. I don't need it. This motherboard's got loads of headers. So each of the fans is connected directly to a header on the motherboard. Works absolutely fine. The fans that are connected to the RGB hub in this bizarre thermal take way, you have no speed control whatsoever. It's all about RGB. They've got a, a proprietary connector which is obviously powering the fans and doing the RGB. And as a result, you have no control over fan speed. Do not understand that. Uh, it's a similar story with the uh, DDC pump. You plug in your Molex, that's it. It just churns away. Now at the moment, it's settled down. It's fine initially. It's just froth city. The amount of bubbles because the thing's whirring away at great speed. And you have to remember DDC pumps uh, are not cooled by the coolant passing through them. D5s are DDCs. It's external, which is why you sometimes see uh, external heat sinks on DDCs. You don't get that with this. So the hardware's working perfectly okay. Nonetheless, there is scope for unhappiness in the details. The case itself is perfect, right? It looks smart enough. There's plenty of space for the cables, uh, drive bays and such like. No problem whatsoever. Our Seasonic power supply slipped in really easily. It is capacious down below, absolutely fine. So happy enough, the price of the case is a penny under 100 pounds, which does include that pair of 200 mil fans. What price are we gonna say the actual case is there for? I mean, it's in the territory of 50 quid. It is a budget case with a mesh front, so it would be harsh to overly criticize it. Nonetheless, the fact those blessed stickers are off center on those blessed front fans, oh, please.
I had a very brief play with the Level 20 XT back when I did Thermal Takes Water Ram. I think that was just before CES of this year. It is an enormous case, absolutely huge. It's in the, out of the mold of the old Core X9, if you can think back that far. And basically you have to put a load of stuff inside it to make any sense of this case. Uh, they describe it as a cube. It's not a cube, but it is very large. It's got glass on every face. If you look closely, you'll actually struggle to see where the air gets in. There, there are gaps, but it's not an airflow case. It's basically the opposite of a mesh case, clearly, because it's all blooming glass. The amount of cooling you can put in it is vast. You could put a pair of uh, 480s or 420s in the roof, uh, a 420 or 480 in the side, a 420 or 480 in the floor, and a 360 or 280 in the front. Just absolutely ludicrous. And yet it comes with one single black 140mm fan. No RGB, just the one fan, therefore you're adding all the hardware. What you've got here basically is a canvas or a playground. You need to add a load of stuff to make any sense of it whatsoever. Having said that, it is not massively expensive. You're looking at 200 pounds. As a regular PC case, this makes no sense whatsoever. But when you're looking at modding a case or you've got some project in mind, the XT, yeah, that's the sort of thing you should be seriously considering. In the top of the case, we've got these two radiator racks. just as you'd expect. And then we move down to the motherboard tray, remove a few thumb screws, the tray lifts out. On the bottom of the motherboard tray, there's one drive bay, which is significant because the next thing I'm gonna do is take out that drive tower. And also this drive tower. And now the XT is basically just an open chassis with this piece of tinware in place. So that single drive bay on the underside of the motherboard tray may well come in useful unless you're using M.2 storage, of course, because now it's all about putting cooling in to, well, I'm gonna call it a case, but it's a frame. This Alpha Cool 420mm rad is mounted on the sort of adapter plates that were previously under those drive towers. And then we put it in place and slide it home. And then we can lock it down with the four thumb screws that originally held the drive towers in place. There's space at the bottom for a 480 if you want to go longer. I've chosen to go wider and gone for the 420. That's a 360 rad in the front. You'll note the top is not supported and I could obviously put extra screws in there. Uh, so a slightly unusual arrangement. Alternatively, I could have a 280 which uses the outer slots. You can instead use the 200 mil mounts and use Thermal Takes 360 mil rad, which is two by 180 with 200 mil fans. I've not seen the uh, 180 uh, form factor radiators yet, so I'm gonna ignore that. 360 or 280. In the side, you can put a 420 or 480. This is a 360 cross flow. And I put the three fans on because it's this unusual bracket that only covers two fans worth. So I wanted just to see how that looked. So the third fan's there, not part of the bracketry. And then some thumb screws. Et voila. Well, that's a surprise, putting the motherboard tray back in place. I've had to remove that drive caddy because there's no way that caddy can sit down with the radiator there. If the rad was a 240, I'd be fine. With a long rad, I can't see that going in. 480 Alpha Cool rad in the top rack. And another 480 Alpha Cool in the other rack. 
and then we lock it down with thumb screws. And when you look at the finished result there, what's that line from Gladiator? Are you not amused? Look at it, five enormous radiators. The cooling hardware inside the XT build is the 240mm Thermaltake DDC kit. However, I swapped out the DDC pump for the D5. And the reason for that is that the D5 mounts in the floor of the case really easily. The floor is heavily perforated, loads of holes I can use. So the mounts simply line up, drop through some screws, nothing from the bottom, job done. It's not the most elegant uh, approach necessarily, but it works very effectively and the D5 is a Vario, so it makes for a nice quiet installation. It's worth pointing out the only RGB in this case you can see is on the 240mm cooling kit, the two fans and the CPU block. The case itself has no RGB whatsoever. Uh, I've put the fans on the inside of the rad. Uh, I wanted to try and draw air through because the thermals of this case, they're okay. Um, frankly, it leaks air kind of all over. I mean, I'm looking at the back of the case. It's heavily perforated. The floor is mesh. Uh, but the glass panels at the sides, front and top, there almost no air gets through whatsoever. Nonetheless, this is a relatively weedy PC I've chosen here, this Ryzen 5 uh, 3600X and the uh, single Vega in such an enormous case, provided air can get in from somewhere and then there is an exhaust fan at the rear expelling it. It does okay, we've had some really hot weather in the UK and uh, the thermals are all right. Uh, but this case is just, when all said and done, quite bizarre. Uh, it's also worth noting, if you look at the cable mess at the bottom, if you look at uh, builders and modders such as Stuart Tonks, who's done a build in the XT, he's a great man for using panels of acrylic and painting parts and such like to hide stuff like that. Uh, this case in that regard is utterly hopeless. Why they've left all this on show, glass on both sides all the way down, is a complete mystery to me. Uh, you simply cannot hide the cables and the tubes and hoses and such like uh, without a bit of help. This case leaves it all on show. You have to use this case as a platform for something. Simply putting a PC in like this, it's not a pretty sight. Uh, but then, frankly, the XT, it's a bizarre chassis. No other way of describing it. The most expensive case in this roundup is the Level 20 GT ARGB. It's £230. Comes with a stack of features. Also, unfortunately, it comes with this little key or pair of keys because the two great big tempered glass doors have locks. I don't like locks. I don't really like tools when it comes to opening the side panel of your case. In this instance, you have to bear that pain. The front of the case, you've got a pair of 200 millimeter ARGB fans. That's obviously the uh, feature of the case. Unfortunately, once again, Thermaltake has put its uh, logo stickers off-center on the hubs of those fans so they wobble or rather they appear to wobble the fans are fine you can put a heap of cooling inside this case you could for example put a 360 rad in the front and the roof and the side and 240 in the floor or a 420 in the front a 280 in the roof a 140 in the rear a 420 huge amounts of cooling massive number of fans you get a decent number of accessories you can add some other clever little bits and pieces uh, it's E80X, the list of features goes on and on, and you've also got a whole load of uh, storage bays inside. Basically, it's big, it's glass, it's level 20. Once again, we have to wonder where the air gets into the case, but we'll find out more about that. Uh, but as things stand, this case looks impressive and it looks very promising. When you pull off the front cover, you can see that the chassis has been tooled for an optical drive bay. However, this model does not support that bay. The GT supports a host of radiators, including up to a 240 in the bottom. Remove the pump mount to open out space. This 240 Alpha Cool. Well, yeah, it can go in there, but it's encroaching in the power supply area. Then we have the side location that can accommodate either a 420 rad or a 360. Clearly, these drive caddies are in the way. And if we flip the case round, on the back, we're going to have to lose these mounts as well. Well, that's cleared some space. And now let's take that 420 rad and offer it up. Once the rad's installed, 
we then have the option of adding the drive caddies back here. So we have one, two, three and a half inch bays and that SSD mount. So despite this enormous radiator here in the side, there is still plenty of scope for adding storage, but we have lost those two drive towers. Let me be crystal clear. If you're considering using a side radiator, these drive bays pretty much block airflow entirely. Depending on your CPU, GPU configuration, how many other radiators you've got, where the cooling fans are, that could either be disastrous or just about acceptable. Personally, if I was putting a radiator there, I would not put these drive bays in this position. However, I would certainly do some experimentation before I came to a final decision on that point. Generally speaking, radiators, you want as much airflow as possible. There's clearly loads of space at the front of the case, even for this massive 420 radiator, but first the fans have to come off to give us access to the mounts. Removing the screws is easy enough. However, one of them has the crosshead off center, which is something I have literally never seen before in all my born days. And there we go. Loads of space to install a rad at the front, so we can either go 120, 140, or use their 180 units, but I'm gonna ignore the 180s because I've never seen one. I'm gonna slip this 420 into position. And then we reinstall the fans just to see what it all looks like. That looks absolutely fine. I've got the fans on the outside, obviously, which means that I don't need to allow for fans on the inside. So I could reinstall these drive caddies like so. I've got the option of putting a pump reservoir on their pump mount, or I could mount a reservoir on the rad or on the back. I've got loads of options there. The top radiator mount is a rack. The rack accommodates a 360 or a 280. If you choose to use these adapters, you can put a pair of 200 mil fans in the roof instead. And lock it down with the thumb screws. You may be wondering about this bracketry here. The idea is this case supports uh, vertical GPU mounts for not one, but two graphics cards. At the moment, the uh, expansion part of the case is set in the conventional horizontal mode, uh, but there's a nifty trick going on there. Before I uh, show you that nifty trick, I'm gonna point out, however, with this vertical GPU, my interest is low because you do not get the necessary PCI Express riser cables. PCI Express cables such as these from Lian Li and uh, Fractal Design typically cost 40, 50, 60 pounds. They are expensive bits of kit. So you can understand that Thermaltake doesn't include a pair of cables on the off chance you might want to put a pair of graphics cards in vertically, but it is a major factor to consider. Anyway, the point about the rear of the case is that this entire panel can rotate. Remove some screws, slide the panel, and there you go. And now it can be rotated like so and secured. And thus, and I'm guessing that that plate, yep, goes back in place. So now we can put graphics card vertically there. The usual concern with a vertically mounted air-cooled graphics card is that the intake is choked when it's up against the uh, side panel of the case. It's crystal clear here, this graphics card is way, way, way away from the side panel and you just about have space for a second air-cooled card. Nonetheless, if you're mounting one card, most of us use one card, this position would be entirely acceptable when you've got about yay much space. It doesn't seem too controversial to say that aesthetically a graphics card with a water block mounted vertically looks even better. 
it's time to build our fourth and final test PC. The hardware inside the GT is essentially the 240 DDC kit minus the DDC pump with the D5 pump reservoir and soft tube rather than hard tube to save time. I started the GT with high hopes. My initial uh, thoughts about it were quite positive. I like the 200mm fans at the front. I like the general look of it. Uh, it's a little bit on the large side but it's not enormous, not like the XT. Various things about it made me wonder a little bit. For example, the keys securing the side panels. I don't, in principle, like that. But when it came to the options for cooling, for example, I felt really positive. I like the front I.O. panel, or I liked the front I.O. panel, until I realized that Type-C port is Gen 1 rather than Gen 2. And as I worked with the case, the realization dawned that it delivers less than it appears to promise. So for example, with the radiator installation, a rad in the bottom makes no sense to me. As I said, a rad at the side doesn't make a lot of sense. I mean, after all, it's up against glass. Uh, you've got drive bays against it. So the fact you can put some hardware in the side position uh, at the end of it all, so what? Rad at the front, absolutely fine. But of course, it's behind those 200 mil fans, although. And rad in the roof makes perfect sense, which is where the 240 mil rad is. On the other hand, pump reservoir location down here. The options, actually, there are not many positions you can put the thermal take uh, pump mount in. And I don't like where it's ended up. Uh, the, this run of tubing here, I, I dislike intensely. Uh, if you had an EK pump res mount and you put the pump res at, at the front uh, on one of the fans, for example, it would be a completely different beast. But I, I think you'd still have issues because essentially your, uh, this tube here would be going pretty much horizontal. You'd be cutting straight across where the drive bays go. So it would be better, I'm sure of that, but I don't think it'd be ideal. An awful lot of options on the face of it in practice very few. So uh, bits and pieces that actually sum up the GT for me. The half length power supply shroud is removable. In fact, you have to remove it to get your power supply in place. And the, it's awkward. It's got four screws, one at the rear, uh, one at the rear, three at the back side, and they are small and they are fiddly. And once you've got them out and you put the power supply in place, you put the shroud back in place and you need to uh, route your uh, front panel cables first. Uh, you put the shroud back in place and you then have to flex it to get the screw holes to line up. Surprisingly awkward to do. The stickers on those front 200mm fans, they're, they're eccentric. That's annoying. On the subject of that, so this case is £230 minus a penny. There are a couple of other options. You can buy a version minus front fans for 170 or you can buy it with ring fans, including at the rear rather than the black fan for 240 So if you're going for the RGB, it would strike me the ring version for 240 another 10 quid is better value. Those front fans, although they look impressive, uh, the fact they're outside the chassis rather than inside doesn't make a lot of sense to me because there's so much space inside and the front intakes is minimal. I mean, absolutely minimal. This case is all about the bling and the look to my mind. The actual airflow side of it is not good. Thermals, given that this is a, a reasonable level PC, it's a, a Ryzen 5 and uh, 6 core and it's a single Vega 64. Thermals are okay. Uh, but with this size of case, you'd expect air to leak in as necessary, you know, through the floor and wherever. If you had to build a really monster high-end workstation PC, I think it would suffer. So the airflow, not great. On the other hand, the PC as a result works absolutely fine. Overall, disappointed. As I say, my feelings with this case, they started high and they went down. Nonetheless, it's not a disaster. It's just not as good as I wanted it first to be. That's it, we've reached the end of our marathon roundup of four thermal take cases. Some general points. The airflow in the level 20 cases I've seen, not great. Loads of glass, sealed off front, sealed top, vents are absolutely tiny. 
I don't understand why Thermaltake's gone to such extremes to put the emphasis on looks rather than airflow. A bit more balance would be good. The RGB, I like. The RGB hub is pretty much okay, but PWM control would be a massive bonus. Fixed speed fans, to my mind, not good. Again, the emphasis is on the RGB and the looks rather than control. It really gripped me that how much I want PWM control. And when I've added in their DDC kits, such as in this MT, I've been able to control the fans on the radiator, but the fans at the front can't do. Other things, pump mounts. This has been a real surprise to me. Thermaltake manufactures a huge range of hardware, including air coolers, all-in-ones, uh, custom loop. They make loads of kit. And they also, of course, make a massive range of cases. The pump mounts in these cases are almost non-existent. Uh, they, certainly, you can't just take a thermal take pump from one of their kits and just plop it into place. Uh, that is a complete puzzle to me. Stepping back, what are my conclusions about each of the cases? So the MT, I wanted to like this case a lot. I think it looks really smart. The airflow is a problem. Uh, the pricing is pretty blooming good. If you aren't desperately concerned about temperatures, then on balance you're getting an awful lot of hardware for your money. But I want more airflow. The Commander C35, I can't speak for the other Commander C3, one, two, three, four cases, but the 35, it looks quite conventional. It's got those great big fans at the front. The RGB is decent. It flows a reasonable amount of air. It works. There's nothing special about it, but it does the job. Um, another recurring theme, the uh, hub stickers on the uh, the, on the fans, why can't they put them on? You know, on the center. Oof! They they make they wobble, or rather they're eccentric. Therefore, they look like the fans are wobbling on their hubs when they're not. They're running true. Uh, those stickers. That's aggravating. Anyway, so the Commander C35, I like. I would say if I was recommending a case out of this group to someone just building a PC, the C35 is the likeliest case to get my thumbs up. And then we come to the two big boys, the two level 20s that are just huge. The XT for 200 quid, I find totally bizarre. You can clearly do a massive amount with that case. In fact, you are obliged to do a massive amount. The fact it's 200 pounds is almost immaterial because the amount of hardware you put inside it is gonna make that 200 pounds look like a drop in the ocean. Personally, I don't like the aesthetic. I particularly don't like the fact that the lower section, which is where you're gonna have power supply or power supplies in the plural and drives potentially pumps and goodness knows, it's all exposed. Some sort of uh, masking or painted panels or something I think is absolutely essential in that case. Now there's nothing to prevent you taking the glass, masking it and painting half of it or whatever or replacing it with acrylic or some such. But that seems to me a tad unnecessary. I think someone at the factory should, or someone designing it more accurately, should have looked at the XT and thought, okay, right, stuff down there, let's cover it, let's obscure it. Uh, the fact that case comes minus RGB is a little bit of a surprise, but then you're gonna add a bunch of fans to it without a shadow of a doubt. No doubt you'll add RGB if you want it. So I'm not hugely hung up on the lack of RGB or the XT. It's the concept that just makes me wonder what on earth's going on. Uh, the XT, not a case for me. The GT, on the other hand, the most expensive case in the group. This one came very close to being a winner for me, really close. It's very large and I'm not a huge fan of very large cases because they're awkward. Uh, you can put a lot of hardware into the GT. It looks good. It looks strange, but it looks good. I like it. Uh, it's, it's the closest of the level 20 cases I've seen to being the one that works for me with that aesthetic, the curved uh, front. Uh, section that goes around to the glass, the way it all comes together. I like that. There are details about it, as I said in the uh, in the review part, that uh, I didn't like. But for me, the single weakest point was the airflow. That case is so big and you can put so much hardware in, it's got such large fans, it should have cooled like a champ and yet it didn't. And the idea you have to take a £230 case and make it work as a case before you make it look pretty or more pretty or whatever. That I found disappointing. So the GT came close to being a winner for me, but surprisingly, and I did not expect this, of the four cases I've seen, the one I'm most likely to revisit and use for a personal build would actually be that Commander C35. There you go. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe to Kit Guru, then we'll alert you to new videos as they become available. I'm Leo Water for Kit Guru. This was a very long roundup of four thermal take cases.